Eleven-year-old Melody lives in a world where words are always at the forefront of her mind, even though she has never spoken a single one. Born with cerebral palsy, which prohibits her from speaking, Melody craves the one thing she cannot have, words. She cannot express a single emotion she is feeling, cannot communicate a single thought, and could not do anything when it mattered the most. Trapped inside her own mind, feeling so unbelievably helpless, a feeling I'm sure all of us have experienced before, Melody is going out of her mind. Words. Words have always swirled around me, like snowflakes. Deep within me, words pile up in huge drifts. I have no idea how I untangled the complicated process of words and thought, but it happened quickly and naturally. By the time I was two, all my memories had words and all my words had meanings, but only in my head. I have never spoken a single word. I am almost 11 years old. When I awoke this morning, it was raining. Messy day out there, Mom said. I nodded. Mom leaned on my door just then and said, you want to stay home today? No one will blame you for not going to school. I shook my head forcefully. No, no, no. I kicked the covers off my feet. She sighed. Ugh, the weather is ugly, and I woke up with a migraine. Plus, Penny is sick. Wearing a floppy yellow hat and yellow duck-footed sleepers, Penny, my little sister, wandered in, coughing and sneezing. Melody, baby, why don't you just stay home with Dad and Penny today? Please? Mom pleaded. But no, I kicked and I shrieked. Can't miss today. Must go. Mom sighed and pulled up my jeans. She shook her head and stuffed my lunch into my book bag. The rain didn't seem to be letting up. If anything, it had gotten worse. I thought it was exciting. I'd never seen the sky so dark at eight in the morning. The thunder and wind made it feel like a scene out of a really good movie. Mom climbed into the car and put the key into the ignition, one hand tightening on the steering wheel. Dad was standing at the front door, grinning, waving his right hand in farewell. I could see Penny, still in her little yellow duck pajamas and now a yellow rain hat, standing behind him. She had mom's red umbrella in her hands. Dad waved his arm from the porch one last time, then turned and went back into the dryness of the house. I watched as the front door almost closed. That's when I saw a small bundle of yellow dragging a red umbrella dart outside of the house. I saw her only for a second, but I saw, I screamed, I kicked, I flailed my arms. The windows were almost completely fogged up and they got even worse as I continued to act like I'd been possessed by demons. Mom looked at me as if I'd lost my mind. She screamed at me, stop it, are you crazy? But I wouldn't stop. I couldn't. I banged on the car window. The whole mom's shirt hit her head. I pinched her, or at least tried to. I can't take you anymore, Melody. Mom screamed over the thunder. I hate when you get like this. You've got to learn to control yourself. Now quit. She put her hand on the keys to start the car. I screamed, I reached over and tried to pull the keys from her. I scratched the back of mom's hand. I had to tell her, I had to tell her. 
hair. I was going out of my mind. Angrily, she turned on the car. A rush of air started to clear the windows. The windshield wipers rocked at their fastest speed. I cried huge sobbing tears. I grabbed at mom's arms once more, but all she did was shake my arm away. I could tell she felt like hitting me again, but, but she didn't. Her lips were tight. She looked out the rear view mirror. And she put the car into reverse. I shrieked, I screamed, I yelled. The rain poured, the thunder roared. Slowly, the big car rolled backward. I felt the soft thud. I became deadly silent. Mom stopped, turning her head slowly to the right almost as if in slow motion as she saw dad come running out of the house, a look of stark alarm on his face. Penny! I heard him yell. Where's Penny? Mom rolled the window down on my side. Rain poured in on me, but, but I didn't care. What do you mean? She's with you. Mom's voice was low, but sounded frantic and very, very scared. She got out of the car. She looked down. She screamed for a long, long time. Her screams were louder than the police sirens that eventually came shrieking around our corner, louder than the fire truck and the ambulance sirens that followed them, louder than my silent cries. I, I sat there for what seemed like hours, strapped in the front seat of a car, as the rain poured in on my open window. Never had I wanted words more. Thank you.